Photographing protests is super rewarding. It's a great place to test your skills and learn new things, push yourself a little bit outside of your comfort zone, and I think it's very important. In this video, I'm gonna talk about why you should photograph protests in the first place, how to navigate the experience, keep yourself safe, and ultimately, come out with great photos and new skills. But unfortunately, because of what's going on in the UK right now, I wanna start this video with a very serious disclaimer. What's going on in the UK right now is not so much protests as large scale civil unrest. And unless you have a press card, a newspaper or publication backing you, a lot of experience and training specifically for high risk situations like this, I highly recommend that you stay at home, wait for it to blow over. And in general, please keep yourself safe, follow the law. All that having been said, let's move on to the fun stuff. I think right now, protest sort of comes with this very heavily political connotation to it. I wanna stress that not all protests are evil versus evil. There's a spectrum of protests, right? There's everything from pride, which can still be considered a protest, all the way to the riots that happened over lockdown. And I've shot everything in between. The common thread through all of it is that protests spread ideas and they're ideas that people are really passionate need to be heard. Some of the most important photos in history have been protest shots. Some photos of protests have been so impactful throughout history that I can't even show them on this video. I'm sure you can guess. And the interesting thing is, even if you don't necessarily agree with what's happening at a protest, I still think it's really important to document your experience of being there, take pictures of what happened, and understand that if there's a big enough group of anybody to show up and support for or against something, it's probably worth photographing. As some people say you shouldn't photograph protests because it can put the protesters at risk if the government or the police don't necessarily agree with what's being protested. I think that that's a foolish idea on two levels. One, at all the protests I've ever shot, the police or security have had way more cameras than anybody else and got everybody's face in high definition. So you don't need to worry about exposing anybody. But second, I think there's a big difference between photographing something and then sharing that photograph. And I think the best approach is while you're photographing, take photos of anything and everything, but then you should think very hard about what you share and where. I don't want this to seem all doom and gloom. The reality is most protests are pretty peaceful. Everyone there is friendly, pride, extinction rebellion. These sorts of things are usually closer to a demonstration and not a dangerous protest. From a selfish perspective, shooting protests is a great way to improve your skills. It's generally an event where there's loads of people that are all interesting. They have signs and costumes and different colors and flags. And there's this sort of expectation that everyone has that they're going to be on camera so you can be a lot bolder, take your time a lot more, figure out interesting compositions. And I think it's just a great way to practice photographing in public and also thinking about composition in terms of how it tells the story. More on that in a little bit, but first I think it's important to talk about how you should prepare to shoot a protest. Before you leave the house, there's a few things you might wanna consider. Especially if you're somewhere that rains a lot, the chances are you may get muddy, you may have beer spilt on you, so on and so forth. So probably don't wear your Sunday best, not only dress for the weather, but also dress for the fact that you may be standing or walking for six hours or eight hours. So make sure you're wearing comfortable shoes, pack water, stay hydrated, pack a snack. Also, try not to be the gear guy. By all means, shoot the protest on wet plate collodion if you want. I've shot protests on everything from 35 to an RB67 to a Polaroid. But if it's your first one, probably pack light. Having too much gear can give you decision paralysis and something really interesting might happen while you're halfway between swapping lenses. I usually recommend that if you're shooting a protest to stick with either a 24 to 70 if you've got one or like a 28 or 35 prime and just bring one camera. The fact is most large protests are gonna be pretty packed and so you're gonna get really close. You don't need your 85. So pack light, there's nothing worse than being stuck in a really packed crowd with a backpack on that weighs a ton. Personally, I like to shoot protests on this. This is my main stills camera. It's a Nikon D750. Laugh if you want, it's a red now. But also there is something to be said for a cheaper, older, sturdier, camera. I love shooting on mirrorless as well and I am planning to look at a Nikon ZF but the reality is this thing is borderline indestructible and it has had mud and beer poured on it and it has been dropped and it's never skipped a beat. I like that I don't have to worry about it and I can focus on the protest. 
Okay, so you've just arrived at the protest. Step one is to engage your brain and make a plan. Generally speaking, you want to arrive at the protest and sort of feel it out for a little bit. Notice where people are, what the general vibe is, how big it is. If there's police there, where are they and what do they look like they're doing? Try to get a feeling for how civil or not so civil the protest might be. It's generally pretty easy to tell if things are gonna get a little bit messy, but again, just engage your brain. A lot of the time in protests, especially the more well-organized protests, there's a podium or some sort of place where people are speaking, an MC, somebody might be introducing different speakers. Ultimately, you wanna figure out Where's the best place for me to be? While you're doing this, this is also a fantastic time to introduce yourself to other photographers. There'll be loads of them there. It'll range from some absolute madman shooting panoramic film who you'll instantly be friends with, all the way through to grumpy old men that work for the news, who you might also be friends with. I met a lot of really good friends in London at protests, shooting the protests. And while photography solo is really fun, I think when you're shooting an event like that, having a group of people that you can get lunch with afterwards, they can help you if something breaks. It's just really nice to have that feeling of community while you're doing it. Step three, it's time to take some pictures, but what'll happen probably at your first few protests is because everything is exciting, everyone's wearing something interesting and everyone's quite angry or chanting or singing or dancing, you will spray and pray like crazy. Seriously, if you do not want to burn through a whole SD card in three minutes or a roll of film in about the same, take a moment and think about your shots. There are some different schools of thought when it comes to approaching protest photography. For a very long time, the people who photographed protests were mostly just career photojournalists. And so they were typically very well versed in sort of the code of ethics of documentary photography, which is what they were doing. I'm vastly simplifying. There's some really good resources I've put in the description, including the AP guide for photojournalists. But generally speaking, the press side of things or the documentary photography side of things is going to have a big focus on being impartial and having as little bias as possible. After all, you're supposed to show what's going on and nothing more. Unfortunately, for people like you and me, who are, if you're anything like me, creative, sometimes to a fault, and don't have any formal education in journalism, being impartial and completely non-biased is borderline impossible. And I think it's not why we take photos. In recent years, the term post-documentary photography has been coming up a lot more. And when I found out about it, it piqued my interest instantly. And basically it's the idea that you can shoot documentary from your perspective. It doesn't make it not documentary that it has a viewpoint. After all, most documentaries do. Think of it as photography's answer to gonzo journalism. You were there, you were in the protest. This is how it made you feel specifically. And I really love shooting in this way because ultimately you're not just shooting the protest, you're shooting your take on the protest, which is another reason I think it's so important. Protest photography, just like almost every other kind of photography, is ultimately a way to tell a story. So focus on looking for things that fit your unique style and the story that you want to tell. So for example, I tend to look for juxtapositions, little connections and emotions and people being themselves in a very organic way. Oh, and a little side note for dealing with people asking you what you're doing and potential conflict. If somebody is at a protest to attend the protest, they're probably very passionate about the cause that they're supporting. If you don't support the cause, you don't need to tell them that. You can just say, I'm here to practice photography. Um, I don't really know either thing of what's going on. I'm not on any side. I'm just the guy who takes pictures and that's perfectly fine. If you're unfortunate enough to be in a position where there are some scuffles with the police or any physical violence, my genuine advice is to get the hell out of there as fast as you can. Utilize your run foo and keep yourself safe. No picture is worth getting arrested or worse, getting injured. I promise it's not worth the 20 likes it'll get on Instagram. Final step, of course, is to get home, load your images onto the computer and then realize that they're not as good as you thought they were when you took them. Don't worry, it'll never change. Okay, but seriously, practice, right? Your first protest, maybe you'll get some shots that you're really happy with if you're lucky, Ultimately, you're probably gonna overshoot and you're probably gonna find that you didn't quite find the images that you were hoping for. That's fine and normal. Don't give up at the first hurdle. Keep trying and keep finding ways to tell your story about what you felt about the protest. If you feel a bit too intimidated by protests and the idea of shooting protests to give it a crack, 
try shooting a parade. It's kind of the same thing. Once you've shot a protest and you have some images that you like and you're ready to share online, I think it's important to think very carefully about the way that people are portrayed in the images. Are you making anyone look like a dick or a criminal? Try not to do that. Personally, I like to try to highlight the lighter moments of a protest, maybe little funny gestures or people coming together, the positives rather than the negatives. If you're not 100% sure that sharing a photo online is in everybody's best interest, don't. Even if it's a really great photo, if you don't feel good about it, that means your gut knows that something is wrong. It's okay to sit on a protest photo for six months, 10 years, however long. It's always going to be a great photo if it's a great photo. So there's no harm in sitting on it until tensions die down and then sharing it in a much more responsible manner. I cannot stress enough how valuable of an experience shooting protests is. I mean, after all, it's kind of like street photography on easy mode. All of your potential subjects are in one space at the same time and they all know their own camera and don't care. So I would highly encourage you to give it a go. Get out there, stay hydrated and create art.